Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of College Hockey Talk. On today's podcast, I'm joined by a very special guest, UNH women's hockey player Kyla Bent joins the show today. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Kyla, and how's everything going? Thank you so much for having me. Um, everything's going good. Kind of school's uh, kind of coming to an end here at UNH, where spring lift's kind of coming to an end, same thing. Um, but yeah, no, overall, everything's going good, and I'm excited to talk today. Awesome. Well, I'm glad things are going well for yourself. What have you been up to besides hockey and training since the season ended a few months ago? Yeah, so since the season ended, um, it was kind of every moment was like, all right, season's over. Um, we've been here since August, basically. We didn't get to go home for Christmas. So first things first, a uh, bunch of girls just kind of like went home. Uh, I waited a bit and then uh, kind of end of March, I decided to go home just for a few weeks to see my family, catch up with them which was honestly super nice to be able to, you know, have that break because we did miss out on a lot of time with our families this year with a new regular season. So it was super nice to get home for a bit. Um, I came back about like three and a half weeks ago now. So just back training, uh, school, lots of school, but a uh, few beach days in the mix, but that's really about it. Yeah. And what are your, what are your, what does your training look like and what do you hope to work on regarding your game? Is like there any specific area that you're trying to improve on the most for next year? For sure. I think one thing like for me, I can always work on is definitely my confidence. I know I struggled with that like a few games. I'd get down on myself for sure. And I think uh, it's something I'm always kind of working on the mental side of my game. Like, I know that's a huge part of everyone's game right now is just working on, you know, keeping that confidence, having that positive, positive mindset always. And I think that's something that I'm really going to work on along with my just overall physical fitness. Um, just being able to, you know, um, be confident next year is something I'm really striving for. That's good to hear. And I want to transition a little bit and talk about the beginning of your hockey career and work all the right. way up to where you are now with UNH. So you're from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Talk about mm -hmm. growing up there and how did you start playing hockey? Yeah, for sure. So I started playing hockey when I was five years old. My, um, I have an older brother, uh, so he started playing. My dad's super into the game, loves hockey. So um, I kind of started through them. Um, I started playing boys hockey, and I kind of grew up on the boys side of things. There wasn't like much for me growing up. There wasn't really a girls team and, until I got to around like Pee Wee Bantam. Um, but just kind of around home, it's like girls that are, you know, the the girls side of it wasn't always as strong the boys just kind of pushed you kind of like a bit more so I stayed on the boys side for a bit and then when I reached Bantam so like grade seven ish um or grade eight sorry um after grade eight I decided to go to Ross A. Netherwood school which was in New Brunswick um but overall yeah my dad was a huge impact for me and my older brother for sure on like just getting into the game and it's always been nice to like have that too because my dad's always pushing me in the summer like um he's always there to support me you know two after games and same as my older brother it's always to have that like support to look up to but also to just like talk to when something's not going right hockey wise so it's been nice having that growing up yeah and did you have like a favorite particular player growing up that you like to watch the most yeah, well, for me, um, Jill Sonye, she's on the Canadian women's national team. It was kind of like nice to see. She literally is from Halifax as well. And I grew up playing for the Halifax Hawks Association. And so did she. So watching her go through was like super cool to see someone like right where I'm from. Like they call us like a smaller province in Canada. So to be able to see someone do that, it just kind of gave me, you know, my confidence that, hey, I can do that too. Like just because I'm from a small province, like doesn't mean there isn't opportunities for me as well yeah and like you just said before you and H you played for Ross a Netherwood school uh, mm -hmm. what was your experience like there overall um so I went to Ross a in grade nine and it was honestly like the best decision I think for me hockey wise academically kind of just everything overall um so um it's kind of hard like to get exposure in boys hockey like there's not going to be college scouts coming to watch females at a at boys hockey games and um same thing small like when I was in Nova Scotia and if I was were to play like um major random girls or like whatever I was going to play major midget we wouldn't really get the exposure needed to be seen by college coaches so my decision to go to RNS was based on how I could get to the next level and I knew I had a great amazing coach there Kayla Blackmore I still talk to her today like she's awesome 
so she really helped me kind of get to where I am today. And just um, those four years were honestly the best. Like for us, we had to go to like tournaments, like um, kind of like in the U.S., but also like we played a lot of teams kind of in all of North America. So it was nice to like kind of get get everywhere around the map and then more college coaches were able to kind of see me there. So. Yeah. What was your favorite memory you've ever had with RNS? Um, honestly, probably like last season in my senior year. So we were playing Stan said in the finals, we went in the overtime. It was like such a good game, but like when I look back at it and like my grade nine year, it was like so hard for us to beat Stan said. And then every year it was just like, that was kind of who we always wanted to look forward to to beating. And just like going to the championship finals last year was just like so nice. Cause like we hadn't been there in so long. Um, RNS. So it was nice to do that. And it was just like a super fun experience. Yeah. And you also captained the Nova Scotia U18 team. Uh, mm-hmm. What type of leadership did you want to bring and just talk about being a part of uh, representing your province? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's always just such a privilege, you know, to represent my province, especially like, like I said, I'm just like so proud of where I'm from because we're just such a small province. So like seeing kind of girls on that team go and do bigger things is just like, kind of like we're proving to other people that we have, we have, we can do that too. Like we can go to the next level. We can play college hockey, like just cause we're from a small province. So no, I like loved my time with hockey Nova Scotia. Like you just learn so much, just there's, you meet so many girls as well too. Like there's so many camps throughout the year you have to go through, but it overall, like it, they really like set you up for if you were to get a hockey Canada experience, you were well prepared cause hockey Nova Scotia did that very well for us. So yeah, no. I loved all my time there. Yeah, and just talk about the experience at those Atlantic games and just what you took away from it overall. Yeah, um, uh, the Nationals Championship was, like, so fun just because, like I said, coming together, like, there was the four provinces. We'd come together for Team Atlantic, which was um, super fun, like, just meeting all the girls that you've always heard about, and then you guys are now playing on the same team. You would have played against them. Now you're just like all on the same team. And we all had the same goal. Like we wanted to kind of like showcase what we had there. So it's just nice having like all those girls and um, so many of those girls will go on and do like awesome things as well and playing college hockey and everything. So um, no, that was a great tournament. And it's kind of cool too, because I knew like teammates, like I'd be playing with in a year's time I would see there and I was like oh she's gonna be on my team next year at UNH like I don't know it was just cool to kind of it's cool to see everyone's talent um it's a great great tournament so yeah yeah I know because I know Tally Warren she's from uh, Nova Scotia as well so it's a nice game to play with some of your province uh, members as well right yeah so when I was in grade 10 me and Tally were on Team Atlantic together um, which was really cool then because I was like oh we're gonna be going to UNH together like that's super cool like yeah, no, for sure. I was always kind of looked up to Tally too, like um, just seeing her go on to UNH. So I was like, oh, that's exciting. Another girl from Atlanta, Canada um, playing in the NCAA. Like, uh, it's just like super cool to see that too. So yeah, it was nice playing with Tally there. Now, how did those experiences with RNS and playing for Team Nova Scotia help prepare you for college hockey with UNH? Mm-hmm. Um, I think like definitely at the national championship level, like that the pace of game was just so much quicker and it kind of gave you like a glimpse of like what college hockey could be. Um, you know, sometimes playing with RNS, like the going from like the RNS level, even to just um, with my province, Nova Scotia, or even just with team Atlantic, you could just kind of see a bit of a change. Same thing with Canada games. Like, um, we could really like see like the jump, like everyone's picking it up. You're seeing everyone's talent. So you kind of got a glimpse of like what college hockey would be, but, um, but no, it was nice to kind of have that change of pace of game. Now, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about was you're from Nova Scotia and the world championships were supposed to be held there. I know they got rescheduled recently, but what were your thoughts on that entire situation being a native Nova Scotian? I mean, it's heartbreaking. Um, but me and some of the girls were even talking about it, but like, it was kind of like, are we surprised? Like this stuff like this just kind of keeps happening to us, like female hockey players. Um, yeah, no, it, it's heartbreaking for sure, especially because it, um, it's exciting. It was going to be in Halifax. Like that's big. It was cool for me. It was like, 
but it's just, it sucks to even you see all the athletes post out there and just how you can like feel they're heartbroken. Like it, it sucks. It, it does as a female athlete. And I think like in the grand scheme of things, they could have had a plan B. They had much time to prepare for all that. So it's just, it's just hard to see that. Now are the rescheduled dates going to be in Halifax or a different location? Pardon? Uh, is the rescheduled dates uh, for the world championships going to be in Halifax or is it going to be at a different location? I think it's a different location in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think they're going to (laughs) continue. I was just curious about that because I saw that rescheduled, but I didn't see like any particular location. Is that still to be determined? Yeah, I think it's to be determined. They haven't released anything yet. So. All right. All right. I just was curious about that. Well, let's talk a little bit about your recruitment process. Uh, What was that like and why did you choose to go to UNH at the end of the day? For sure. So um, I toured UNH in grade 10, I think. Um, So I was kind of down here with my parents. It was after a showcase, actually. Um, So we kind of just stopped through a few schools. We're looking around. Um, I don't know, UNH, um, the coaching staff, to be honest, like I met with Bill Bowes and he's actually retiring now. So it's kind of sad. But he was just so welcoming, had such good things to say. And also a few of the players I walked with, I walked with Julia Scammell, who's from Turo, Nova Scotia, where I'm from. And she was in her freshman year then. But um, no, it was just like nice to know there was like other Atlantic Canadians on the team. And even like the weirdest feelings were like, it just kind of reminded me of Ernest in some way, like the brick buildings everywhere. I don't know, just such a nice campus. So it did kind of have like a homey feeling and um, I like the location and everything. It was just nice. The coaching staff, obviously the rink, like beautiful. Um, But yeah, no, uh, I was really happy with my choice. Now, what was the biggest adjustment you had to make to college hockey? Was it the speed of the game or just the mental side of the game, making quicker decisions with the puck? Mm -hmm. I think for me, like I said, I'm still working on my confidence and for sure it was the mental side that took a huge adjustment for me because like I know I could do something but I just like I need the confidence to do it so some games were um I definitely got in my head but I think for me we just keep working on that um I know I got better towards the end of the season just like in the start of the season just had kind of like a little um little downfall there but I think for me it was definitely adjusting mentally to just like okay you made one mistake like it's fine. Like you need to reset for your next shift, which is something I don't think I was like super used to before. Um, and just like being confident with the puck. Sometimes I just feel like get the puck, give the puck away, but like I had more time and space than I really thought at some point. So I think like having that confidence for next year will really help me. Now, what was the biggest improvement you've made to your game this past year when you reflect on it? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think overall, my confidence did kind of go up over um, the course of the year. Cause at the start, like I would just kind of get the puck, move the puck, but I think I got more comfortable towards the end of the season, um, you know, carrying the puck and making plays and doing things. Um, so I think that was kind of one of my big, biggest improvements. Um, so, yeah. Now I want to start off talking about the hockey East playoffs that you were just in. Uh, what was it like being Holy Cross on home ice and just talk about the positive momentum that game brought to your team heading into Northeastern the following yeah. week? Yeah, I guess it's it's always like a good feeling to come off like a win like that and going into Northeastern we were like, hey, we just like beat Holy Cross. Like we're good. Like the vibes were all good in the dressing room, which is I think most important is like when the team's gelling, the vibes are good. Like going into Northeastern will be good, but um, unfortunately we did fall short against Northeastern, but, um, but yeah, it was, it, we did have one win against Northeastern, which was nice, but, uh, we couldn't get the important one. Mm -hmm. And I guess like, what was the offensive game plan against Holy Cross? Because they're one of the more defensively sound teams in hockey East and they have a great goaltender in Jada Brennan, I guess like what was something your team worked on in practice, uh, preparing for that team? Right. Um, I think a lot like what we had been working on towards the end of the season was more just driving to the net, especially like as forwards, like we would sometimes like even on home ice, we'd play outside, kind of on the outside, which was like super frustrating because then we'd always just be passing around the outside and we get no pucks through. So I think something big we were thinking of going into playoffs was just get to the net, drive to the net, put pucks on net. Um, that was definitely something we were really working on towards the end of the season, especially during playoffs. 
Yeah, and talk a little bit about that game against Northeastern in the playoffs. Uh, what was your mindset throughout that entire game? Because it felt like to me that the score didn't really reflect how close that game actually was. Yeah, exactly. And I, I totally agree with that. Like, I don't feel like the score kind of reflected, like, how the game went. Like, we had such, like, good momentum at the start. And they're obviously a super hard team to play against. But um, I thought we, you know, we had a fir good first period. But, um, you know, it was tough because I feel like sometimes after we get one, two, three scored on us, we kind of, like, get down on the bench sometimes, which is something, like, as teammates we're trying to work on, you know, as well but um but yeah no it's just it that was a tough game especially because it didn't feel like the scoreboard did reflect how it was going now how was playoff hockey different from regular season hockey in your perspective especially since this year it was single elimination format mm -hmm. I thought like it was just like single elimination to me was crazy I was like holy like we're we're doing this like it's happening like this is one and done like you're you're moving on but um, but no, yeah, no, it was crazy for sure. Like just the pace, kind of like the nerves, even like, I remember my first college hockey game, like I had those same nerves and more intense during playoffs. And like, I hadn't had that in like a long time. So just knowing like everyone on that team was feeling that too. And just like everyone on the other team, like the pace just elevates, like it just, it, it just happens. Like everyone knows it's playoff hockey and the pace just elevates just, you know, like an in inch by inch type of game. Now, your team had a lot of success throughout the regular season. You beat the number eight team in the country in Boston University, and then you also beat Northeastern in a shootout. Uh, how important are those types of wins for your team moving forward into next year? Mm -hmm. I think it speaks, like, a lot for our team and, like, what we're capable of. Like, I know beating Northeastern was, like, such a great feeling, and, like, it just shows, like, what we're capable of and, like, those teams could can be scared of us, like, when we're on our game. Like, those games, if we – can play all next season like that like I think you know we have a really good chance at like winning hockey East in the next one two years um hopefully we will because I think those games really show teams like what we are capable of now what was it like not playing in front of any fans this year and how'd you adjust to that especially at Whittemore Center since it's such a big arena mm -hmm. honestly like the toughest part for me was like not having my family in the stands because I know they'd be super excited to see it. You know, it's always tough. It's nice to have fans in the stands and know you have that support up there. Um, we did have like our trainer who cheered really loud. He was awesome. So he was always in the crowd. But um, but no, it was tough um, not not having my family there for sure. But also just like fans in general, you always feel that support from them. Yeah, and were the cupboard cutouts, like, did that help in a way? Because in talking to some players, some players didn't notice it, and other players thought it kind of made a difference. Yeah, like, it kind of did. But, like, for a while, we had a bunch of, like, shirts. They were supposed to be for White Out the Wit. So they just put them all up in the stands. And, like, I felt that helped a lot. Like, it looked, like, full in the arena. I don't know. It was, it was, it felt better to me, to be honest. Now, how did you adjust to the bigger ice surface at Whittemore Center? Yeah, it's, like, it's actually huge. Like you don't even realize until you're playing and you're like, I find it was hard for us for some games for sure. Cause it'd be like, we play one at home, then one away. And the game at home, it's like, we had all, all this time and space. We could play on the outside. And then it's like, we get to another rink and it was like, it felt like we had no space. So it was kind of hard to adjust when we played at home and then played a uh, game away. But um, we did like make a lot of adjustments in our practices. We'd like practice in smaller areas or like, condense like some areas just you know to to make sure we're, we were prepared to split to play in a smaller rink now three and three overtime was also introduced to college hockey this year what was that like for yourself having more space on the ice and having more chances for offensive opportunities yeah I I love three on three hockey honestly like I think it, it's great that that's like in the overtime um we like the thing about our team is like we're very offensive too so it was nice, like, especially in the game against Northeastern when we went in, into overtime, it's like, it was so back and forth that it was like, it, it's nice to watch, but it's also fun to play. You know what I mean? So it was, it's nice having that added in there. And uh, I think it like helps our team, especially because we're, we play good, play well three on three and we practice three on three a lot. And so it was super nice. Now you also had to deal with a lot of schedule changes throughout this season. How'd you mentally deal with all the postponements that happened to your mm -hmm. schedule and what was the key for maintaining flexibility for this year? Because I know in Hockey East, 
Uh, you guys didn't even know who you were going to play until the Tuesday before the Friday game. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was like, it was hard for sure. Like never knowing what, when you were playing or what day it might be. So you always kind of had to be ready, but honestly, like I'm just so grateful we actually got to play and we actually played a fair amount of games compared to other teams in hockey. So I think like every game it was, our coach would always just be like, Hey, we get to play hockey. Like, let's go play. And you know, that's kind of what we, we did this season. We got, we got the opportunity. We'd take it. So I, th I think it was like, we had to be ready, but um, we were just grateful we got to play this year. Now, how did you prepare for opponents uh, this year with the short, shortened, I guess, schedule you had? Because I know in previous years, talking to other college hockey players, they said they had to kind of change their approach a little bit. Yeah, no, I'm not, um, I'm not super, like, superstitious and things, like, before games, but definitely preparing for me, like, I'm big on sleep. So, for me, like, knowing I have a game in two days or, like, I need those two days to, like, make sure I'm getting proper sleep and all that, but... um but yeah, no, I didn't find it terrible because I can, I find I adjust pretty quick. So it wasn't like terrible for me, but, um, but I, I know for some players it was harder to, they really like knowing like when their game's going to be, they have a whole like few day schedule to follow, but no, not for me. I think I was pretty good. Now I want to ask you about some of the teammates you get to play with. The first teammate is Avery Myers. She had a great offensive year this year in Hockey East. Uh, what's it like being her teammate both on and off the ice? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so Avery came in with our freshman class and I'm actually really good friends with her. So, um, no, it's nice. She just finds the net. She knows she can, she, the girl can score. Like you just put her on the ice, she'll score. Um, and I always said that to her on the bench. It was kind of funny. I was like, come on, Avery, go, you're going to go find the net. Like just go out there and she'd go score. It was, yeah, no, it's nice playing with Avery. Now you mentioned her uh, earlier on in the interview, but Julia Scammell, just talk about the leadership she brought to your team uh, being a senior and just what's she like as a teammate, both on and off the ice as well? Yeah, Julia is super like um, sweet girl. Like it was nice having, we were D partners for a bit towards the end of the year. Um, so it was nice having that just kind of like someone from home. Um, she's like super easy to talk to too. Um, but yeah, no, it's sad she's leaving next year because she's from, you know, Nova Scotia, which is like nice to have that on the team. But yeah, no, it's sad she's leaving. Now, when you look back on this past season, what do you overall take away from it? I think I just take away like overall, like I was saying before, like how grateful I was we got even got to play during COVID. Like this was probably one of the craziest years to play hockey. And it, it was just such a great group of girls who were just like excited to play a game that it was just so nice when we finally got to. Um, so yeah, no, I'll, I'll never forget this year just based on COVID and everything, but super nice. So we're now in a segment I like to call the non-hockey segment where I ask you some non-hockey questions. My first question to you is if you could have lunch with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? Oh my gosh. Um, if I could have lunch, um, probably I would say like Luke Combs. Like I love him as a singer. <laughs> so probably being able to meet him, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, my next question was going to be, what music uh, do you like to listen to before a game? Um, I'm like country, like through and through. Like even before a game, I'm like weird, but like I would listen to country in my headphones. But my friends got me kind of onto the, like the rap music and everything. So I know some of those songs, so I'll listen to them. But like I love country music. Do you ever listen to some of those uh, big booty remixes before games? Because I know that's popular. Yeah, no, we sometimes do it in the dressing room and stuff, but I'm not, I'm not big on them. Like, I don't really listen to them. Now, what is your biggest pet peeve? My biggest pet peeve? Oh, we were just talking about this, actually. Um, I think it would be, like, slow drivers. Mm -hmm. I just can't, like, <laughs> just, I hate it. It makes me so annoyed, for sure. But that's my pet peeve, too, so I yeah. one, especially here in New England, it can get pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Now, what is your favorite class you take at UNH? Um, I think my favorite class right now is anatomy and physiology. It's, like, super hard, but, like, the stuff we're learning is, like, interesting, but it's just, like, a very hard and demanding class. Now, if, you, if there was a movie made on your life, who would you want to play yourself? Um, so this is actually funny. We were just like, we had to answer these 20 questions, um, like as a team. And this was one of the questions and I put myself because I wouldn't really want anyone else to play me. I'd want to be the actress. So 
Well, you don't, you don't have to do too much acting because you're playing yourself. So that's the, yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. They were. I was all like, "Is it weird if I put myself?" Because like I don't know who else I'd want to play me. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a good answer. I feel like. <laughs> now speaking of your teammates, uh, who's the funniest teammate you have at UNH? Oh my gosh, um, Charlie's pretty funny. Charlie Kettle and Avery. Avery's actually really funny. Uh, yeah, probably those two. They're funny. Who is the best trash talker on the team? Trash talker. Mm. Avery, she could throw some things out on the ice. I feel like she would get under someone's skin on the ice for sure. That's an important aspect because it draws penalties. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. I think she'd, she'd come up with some good things. I haven't really heard anything. But. Well, who has the best style on the team besides yourself? <laughs> um best style scam has really good style actually she does scam maybe yeah tam tam has like cool style too ray everyone kind of has like different styles but i like like the way scam dresses is probably how i would dress too so I, that's why i'm biased i would like her style nice now since you are a hockey player i want to ask you this what's your thoughts on tom Wilson's uh punch uh, to Brian Boos Nevich uh, in the Rangers game a few days ago and just the whole response to that I actually didn't see it so I like I don't watch very much NHL hockey which everyone's always like what like you play hockey I really like don't unless I'm like home with my like dad and brother but like no I I I didn't even see it so oh all right well then I it was it was just an interesting topic because I wanted to hear another hockey player's opinion on it right yeah no I'm sorry I didn't I didn't see that do you like Tom Wilson at all or not really? No, I just I don't really have opinions. Like I just like I just kind of watch like hockey. I'm like, oh whatever. Nice, nice. Well, back to some hockey questions. Now my first question too is we were just talking about growing the women's game uh, regarding the world championship. So what would you do to help grow women's hockey in your opinion? Um, I think it's hard for me to kind of pinpoint that exactly, like where would we start? But I know like just something for me that I think is important is, you know, like my dad kind of at home, like runs hockey camps and stuff. And I was saying to him, like, I feel like it's really important. Like he has like guys go out on the ice and like instruct the kids. I'm like, I jump out on the ice and I kind of got one of my friends out there too. I was like saying to him, I think it's like super important that these like young boys also see like girls are able to do that too. Like they can coach and they can do things like that. Um, so that's something me and my dad were talking about even when I was home and the importance of just having female leaders out there as well. Is it different coaching go- girls hockey or versus boys hockey? Um, I think girls listen better, to be honest. <laughs> um, I haven't totally like coached like a girls team, but I've just like been on the ice with a boys team where there's girls out there. But no, I, I totally think girls like they'll listen, they'll take in what you're saying. Maybe it's just because I'm a girl talking to them, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Now, what advice would you give younger players, I guess, who are trying to make a Division One college hockey scholarship? Yeah, no, I just think it's like important to like never give up. And just make sure you're constantly working towards your goal. I know when I was younger, like, I'd always have three goals every year. I'd write them on this whiteboard, like, in my house. And I'd always make sure, like, I was accomplishing those. So I think it's important, you know, to always set a goal for yourself and kind of try to achieve that. So, um, but, yeah, I'd never never give up on, on your dream. Just keep working hard. And I think hard work, like, comes with a lot of um, – come, will come with the, the end result. Now, I know we mentioned a few people throughout this interview, but if there's anyone I forgot to mention, do you have any shout outs to your teammates, friends, or family members that I forgot to mention? Yeah, no, I would just like um, kind of how I was saying, like just thanks to my family for everything they've done for me. Um, I honestly wouldn't be here without them for sure. So um, just knowing that I always have their love and their support is super important to me. So um, if there's anyone I'd want to thank, it would definitely be my family. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Kyla. I really appreciate it. I wish you nothing but the best moving forward in your hockey career. I know you're going to do great things. Take care, stay safe, and I look forward to watching you play next year. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me out. Now, one question I want to ask.